Hello everybody and welcome back to this semester's Shark Tack. As always, our sharks will decide who receives funds from Stewart Observatory. Our first shark has been around for a while. He hand-built Spitzer, is personally flying up with JWST, <laughs> and has enough papers in his office to keep him warm even in the IR wing. It's George Ricky. <laughs> Next up, she's one of our newer hires, but she's been making waves ever since she's been here. She discovered the Magellanic Clouds. Through time steps, she interacts with more undergrads than some professors who teach classes. And she has personally kept staples in business through bulk orders of post-it notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good Tina Besla! <laughs> and last but not least, folks, we have someone who builds planets in her spare time thinks all stars should have a friend, and writes <laughs> letters of recommendations for newborns. It's Caitlin Crowder! <laughs> Give him a hand. <laughs> now, TAC members, what are you most excited for this year? Well, Rachel, I'm just excited to see, to have the opportunity to hear some cutting edge science out of some of the brightest minds in the country. I'd especially like to see some younger scientists putting their ideas out there. They might be the next JWST. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point from George. I mean, we have the money, we have the ideas, and we should put them together in a scientific, scientifically cohesive way. Personally, for me, I would love to hear some proposals for outreach initiatives. I believe we could always be doing more. That's exactly what I was thinking. Great point from George and Gutina. But what I really look forward from hearing from these proposals today is the most creative, unique, and efficient idea to solve our most pressing mysteries. These guys better be ready to answer some hard-hitting questions. Wow, okay, let's begin. <laughs> so for our first proposal of the evening, we have our beloved Peter Baruzzi. He raises the average height in the department. Let's see if he raises the bar for these proposals. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sharks. You know who I am from my universe machine. But today, I have another project in mind. Today, I'm here to talk about the Y-O universe machine. <laughs> in today's graduate student world, stress levels are high, motivation is low, and the time is now for, the, for a change. May I present to you my own patented self-help universe machine. What is a universe, you may ask? It will be a series of self-help videos narrated by yours truly. Videos are one to three minutes in length and topics include overcoming imposter syndrome, getting up before 11 a.m. for a class, <laughs> and finishing the proposal even though you want to strangle your collaborators. <laughs> by improving the mental health of our graduate students, we can solidify the bond between advisor and student, increase the frequency of smiles in the department, <laughs> and hopefully hang out beyond designated interaction areas. <laughs> <laughs> to top it all off, we can expect to see a 300% increase in productivity as well. In order to make this a reality, I need a buy-in from Steward starting at $200,000 for three years. With the universe machine, we can mark off change your life. And <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of making graduate students happier even though I think they have it pretty good already. You know, back when I was a graduate student, we recorded everything on photographic plates. What platform would you plan to release these motivational videos on? I'm really glad you brought up that point. I was really hoping to make use of new techniques in distributing videos, like YouTube or Jupyter Notebooks. <laughs> but you're absolutely right that we should look to alternative methods, like photographic plates, in order to reach all audiences. Hey, Peter, really cool idea. Um, but you know, there are motivational videos out there already. What would make your universe, clever name by the way, different from those? Great question, Gertina. Unlike other self-help videos, my program uses an MCMC -MC approach to determine <laughs> the videos that are best for each grad student. <laughs> this way, we can ensure that grad students watch only the videos they need to and get back to working happily as soon as possible. This is really interesting, Peter, but I'm confused on two aspects of this whole idea. One. Have you run any simulations for this? <laughs> Where did you get the 300% increase in productivity number from? And two, why do you need this much money? I imagine you can record these on an iPhone and upload them wherever you want. <laughs> wow, yeah, let me think about these for a second. 
For your second question, I would say that quality is everything. No one will want to watch a low quality video or read a PowerPoint with paragraphs of text on it. So, with the support of Steward, we can make the production values necessary to have the most impact. As for the first question, I did simulate graduate students with lab mice and found those productivity increases. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sharks, you've heard the pitch. You've asked your questions. Take a minute to deliberate and decide. Money, Money awarded. awarded. <laughs> All right, thank you, Peter. Next up, we have someone with the largest graduate student group in the department. He one day hopes to image the inside of an exoplanet. So let's see what he brought, what he brings us today. Please welcome Daniel Pai. Thank you, Sharks, for having me here. Um, many of you know me from my ambitious Nautilus project, uh, the potential next generation of space telescope. And today I'm here to unveil the next step. You all have heard a lot about my proof of concept for the Fresnel lenses as a main optical component. However, I have told you relatively little about the test for the inflatable spheres that will housing those telescopes. Today, I come to you with an exciting proposal. I plan to launch thousands, if not, if not hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions, if not billions <laughs> of balls into space in order to test the proof of concept for the housing of Nautilus telescope. I really was inspired by the ball pits at the Chuck E. Cheese. And I even think that could serve as a recreation for astronauts on spacewalks. As for a, a mere $3 million in order to find this important endeavor. As someone with experience in launching things into space, the number one problem is, of course, space itself. How do you plan to put all these inflatable spheres into space? Even though we would have loved a bigger mirror on James Webb, we had to make cuts in order to fit things inside the rocket. Have you thought about this? Good question. The really fantastic thing about these balls is that they are really, really light. For phase one, I plan to launch beach ball sized <laughs> spheres, which can pack easily, which can pack thousands of easily into the um, more than rackets to be launched and then inflated in space with compressed air tanked in a matter of hours. This seems cool and all, but one of the pressing problems in space right now is dangerous space debris. Where would these balls end up once the test is complete? A really good point. I've already begun designing the Nautilus for the Nautilus. <laughs> <laughs> a giant space net constructed <laughs> from the carbon fiber which can be deployed in order to reclaim all the balls in a short and a safe period of time. This could also be deployable in order to rescue astronauts adrift in the cosmos. Are there any other scientific projects that would benefit from a test like this? This seems like a lot of money and time for a very specific goal. What are the broader scientific impacts of this? Of course, Kitten. Not only would this be a proof of concept for my Nautilus project, but we could also have public view nice to observe these inflatable balls <laughs> <laughs> in action. You see, these spheres are highly reflective and it would be ideal for getting the public excited about the space experiments. Scientifically, they are ideal environments for testing effects of microgravity. Finally, we could offer them as souvenirs once the experiment is complete. Money, Money awarded! <laughs> Thank you, Daniel Pai. Wow, what great proposals we have seen so far. Let's hope the rest are just as good. Next up, we have the best beard and steward title holder for the fifth year running. It's Phil Pinto! <laughs> Where's the beard? <laughs> Hello, sharks. Thank you for finally having me in the play. <laughs> Computers are the heart of everything that we do. Developing new techniques for increasing the processing power of our computer could propel the field further. Everyone is wondering what the next frontier will be for the computations. Is it going to be GPUs, quantum computing? Neither. Today, esteemed colleagues, I present the next step in parallel computing. This is Applewhite Series 3. 
I have managed to exploit a quirk in the hardware of these devices <laughs> that allow them to become linked and act as a parallel computer. <laughs> Due to their small size, they have a large surface area to volume ratio and therefore can emit heat faster than any modern computer. They can be run at the un unimaginably high capacities without any adverse effects. I simply asked for $500,000 to purchase 100 of these little beauties <laughs> <laughs> along with the software necessary to link them together. Well, think about it, a supercomputer you could carry with you everywhere. Truly amazing. Sharks, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> Leave it to Phil to come up with something ingenious like this. Recycling old materials is frankly something that is not done enough in astronomy. My only fear is that people will be wary of carrying some supercomputers on their wrists. Phones have been known to explode. Can you guarantee the safety of users? Good question, George. While I, uh, while I think there is a significant risk associated with explosions, the reward is far greater. And anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the Apple Watch is water resistant. If the wearer becomes aware of an imminent explosion, they can simply dunk their hands into the nearest pool <laughs> or <laughs> under any faucet in order to cool the device down. <laughs> All right, Phil, putting the exploding hands aside for now, have you thought about the citizen science implications of this endeavor? Could this allow any Apple Watch user to donate unused CPU hours on their wrist for steward research purposes? Well, Gertina, I was already assuming we could take unused CPU hours from old Apple Watch consumers without their notice. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is clearly a top priority. Sure, they, uh, they might all might notice the 200% decrease in battery life, <laughs> but I don't think that's the too big of a deal. <laughs> so to me, it sounds like there are a lot of negatives to funding this proposal. Is there really a need for a personal supercomputer yet? Well, of course. <coughs> Money awarded. <laughs> Thank you, Bill Pinto. Wow, so if that project got funded, maybe everyone has a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> and next, we were gonna have a proposal from Erica Hamden to build a new space telescope, but it appears she's out of town today as usual. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on. <laughs> Last and very much least is a proposal coming from our very own graduate students. As we all know, Stuart likes to encourage our graduate students to PI their own proposals. So let's see what they've come up with this year for Shark Jack. Hi, I'm Christine and I represent the Graduate Student Council. As steward graduate students, we feel it would be extremely beneficial to our productivity if we could have, uh, and, and our mood, if we could have our very own graduate student lounge. Similar to, but hopefully better than what the undergraduates have right now. <sighs> <laughs> this would be a safe place where graduate students could relax between hard periods of procrastinating. A place where grads could talk with one another about papers they have no intention of reading. Where they could drink five cups of coffee per day without their advisors knowing. All of this and more are possible with a graduate student lounge. All we're asking for is a small sum of about $10,000, a mere .0001% of the JWST budget. <laughs> wow, okay, so this seems to be something the graduate students are really passionate about. Sharks? Any questions? You know, I have to admit, I didn't even know the undergraduates had their own lounge. <laughs> I can see the benefits to having a space just for the graduate students, but I worried they would put it to use for putting off actual work that they need to be doing. <laughs> Tell me, where were you thinking of putting this lounge? Yeah, so we've been thinking about this for a while, and the best answer we could come up with is to build a third wing of Stewart. We could have more faculty offices for y'all, um, and more graduate student offices, and a nice big grad student lounge. And to top it all off, we could have the room numbers prefixed with two N's, just to let people know this is the new, new part of it. <laughs> Christine, I would love to support this idea, but I don't think this was very well thought out. A whole new addition to the building is totally unfeasible. Let's think of something more doable. Would you be willing or opposed to upgrading the current interaction area instead? I guess the problem with the current areas, assuming you mean the bird cage and the area just outside it, <laughs> is that the furniture is outdated and uncomfortable, and the coffee machine is like a million years old and never has enough coffee throughout the day. Okay, so these issues are much easier to fix. A graduate lounge seems to be a good idea, but realistically, you should expect something much smaller. What if we help you get a new bird cage furniture and a new <laughs> coffee machine? Those aren't really what we wanted. Yeah, that sounds much more reasonable. What if we don't give you any more money than you already have in your grad council fund? 
and let you do all the legwork for the for finding the new furniture and a new coffee machine. Can you set up your own task force? I, mean, I guess, but and that's all the time we have. <laughs> <laughs> what a great compromise. <laughs> Okay, so let's say thank you to our amazing proposers this evening and our panel members. Join us next year for another exciting edition of Shark Tap.